got a varied history with licensed games. I found Blazing Dragons to be funny, if a bit simplistic and short, whereas I could only bring myself to complete one game in the Discworld series. In my defence, the first game is notorious for its back asswards moon logic. Throw in the reasonably inoffensive slash points for trying effort made on Scooby-Doo Mystery and something becomes clear to me. It doesn't seem to make a damn bit of difference whether I'm familiar with the licensed property or not. Hell, the one I probably knew best was Discworld and that only got a 33% win rate. On the other hand, I'd never heard of Blazing Dragons before I did that review. Is that really four years ago? Bloody hell, I used to appear on camera. Anyway, with that discovery in mind, it is with no trepidation, yet minor apologies, that I introduce the interactive adventures of Dog Mendoza and Pizza Boy. It's based on a series of comic books with a suspiciously similar name, the third book of which comes out next month. I have never read it, and thus will be reviewing this purely as a point and click game. Someone else will have to acutely analyse the authenticity of this animated adaptation. Normally I go from the preamble right into the story, but something about the main menu bothered me. You hover over these hotspots to access the game, the settings, etc, but clicking on them does bugger all. It's the box with text that pops up, that's what you need to click. I feel like this was done the wrong way round. You had one hotspot which needed multiple options, yet you changed the other four to match the minority. One of those others is a set of case files on what I can only assume are characters from the comic book series along with some pop culture references. Keep that in mind for later, put a pin in it. Also that automatic subtitle progression checkbox we saw in Kelvin and the Infamous Machine, that's back and I still need a better name for it. Okay, we can do the story now. The story begins with a spoopy narration about how all the monsters in your stories are A. Real and B. Decided to settle down in Lisbon, Portugal. Nope, wait, he gets interrupted and dragged back to reality. Start again. So the story begins in progress as Dog and Pizza Boy, all one word, are in a less than minuscule pickle. That's my special way of saying they're surrounded by creepy shadows and hanging over a vat of boiling goop. Dog decides that he doesn't remember the series of poor life choices that led them here and asks Pizza Boy to fill him in. So our story begins in Dog's office where they were visited by- nope, sorry, wrong again. Dog wants to start with a car chase. So they do. Why, you might ask, aside from fleshing out a kind of funny joke, to fit in some exposition for those filthy casual non-comic readers of course. Like the gargoyle sidekick, or at least 10% of one, the fact that Dog is a werewolf, and then there's Pazul, the ancient mute man demon trapped in a little girl's body. Needless to say that leads to a couple of mixed pronouns. They also get an inventory tutorial out of the way while they're here, pretty slick of them, and it breaks up the non-interactive intro a bit. Otherwise it would mostly be this. Despite being a very transparent exposition fest, and it's not even the first point to click to feature an interactive car chase, it's not a terrible scene. And as one of the aforementioned filthy casuals, I would have been a bit lost without the exposition, so I don't hate its presence. This is an odd world to be thrust into, what with the demons and the monsters and the Portugal. Besides, what was the last point and click game that let you throw a Molotov cocktail at a truck full of gargoyles? Yeah, that's what I thought. This finally brings us back to the office of our merry band, where we get to meet your protagonist properly. Brave, determined, steadfast, and sporting a lovely colourful jacket, it's Pizza Boy! I wouldn't call him the brains of the operation, but he is smarter than Dog or his pay grade give him credit for. <laughs> the, oh, that wasn't even on purpose. To be honest, I thought the automatic panel art was broken this whole time. Anyway, Pizza Boy's hidden talents become clear when a young woman arrives seeking supernatural sleuthing services and Pizza Boy handles the questioning. This little interrogation mechanic pops up a few times over the course of the game. Ask a question, hear the answer, then give the correct response to pry that extra morsel of information out of the subject. Or in this case, get interrupted by Dog giving a voice to his dick. Dog heads out to dinner with his new client. See, I wasn't just making that dick thing up for comic effect. Oh come on, that one barely even works. As I was saying, Dog soon goes missing while tailing a suspect, and the rest of the game sees you tracking him down while uncovering the mystery of a terrifying gypsy curse. <laughs> gypsy curses. There's no such thing. Oh, fair enough. Just tracking down Dog then. Now, you'll be able to see this for yourself, but I have to mention the graphics. This game looks awesome, helped not only by the comic book art style, but by various lighting effects, great animation, and an absolute ass ton of detail. Any idiot can make a game of high resolution art, but this is something else. One of the best looking point and clicks I've ever played, for sure. I just wish the rest of the game lived up to it. I'm not outright calling the game bad or even mediocre. All I'm saying is one of the best looking pointy clicks I've ever seen isn't one of the best playing pointy clicks I've ever played. It starts off alright, it's got the kind of coin interface I don't actually complain about. One click brings up your clearly marked and reasonably sized hand, eye and mouth verbs. No need to waste precious milliseconds holding down that mouse button. Except thanks to muscle memory I ended up doing that half the time regardless. Other than my own dumb body, no real complaints there. 
Then there's the right mouse button, which points out exits and important items. I seriously never got a handle on how it chose what to highlight. Definitely not people, sometimes objects you can grab, but other than that I have no idea. You can't double click your way through exits either, that's a minus. Especially when Pizza Boy has a tendency to take slightly longer than necessary to traverse areas. To cap off the interface talk, there's the inventory, and I have three complaints. One, no keyboard shortcut, which means two, this giant hand is there most of the time because that's what you click to open Pizza Boy's fancy jacket of holding. Three is slightly more complicated, but one I've mentioned before. I vastly prefer clicking items to select them rather than dragging. Doubly so when you first need to drag them out of the inventory area to close it before you can use the item in the world. And if, like me, you easily lose track of what you're meant to do, there's a notebook with a list of objectives. By the way, clicking those will give you a hint towards the objective in question without any warning that it might spoil something. So watch out for that. I'm not even sure I can take any of these as deliberate design choices because for all the effort put into the art, the game's lacking in a few other places. Text and voice not matching, that's fairly minor, especially when they both convey the same meaning. Typos, on the other hand, will. Happen to be twice at most, but embarrassing nonetheless. Swapping an item in your inventory with an item in the world, only to have the world item's description stay the same? Now, that's really embarrassing. Sorry about the puzzle spoiler, but I feel like it doesn't matter too much, and this is for why. I could be way off the mark here, but there seems to be a severe lack of interactive objects in this game, pretty much the bare minimum required to implement the puzzles. I mean objects in the world that you can look at and use your inventory on. Now, having red herring items in your game doesn't strike me as a good idea. Useless items, that is, literal red herrings tend to be useful. In fact, I'm struggling to think of a point and click game that does have red herring items, but when you have such a limited number of world objects to use your inventory on, it can make puzzles a little bit obvious. I have a key. There is exactly one locked door in the vicinity. Quick, someone get me a walkthrough! Not that I never had to consult a walkthrough, the theme park did trip me up a few times. Doesn't help that I'm pretty sure this follow a compass puzzle kept sending me in the wrong direction. If there's a trick to that one, I didn't get it. Ended up brute forcing my way through instead. Point is, the lack of world objects that you can so much as look at denies you a lot of opportunities for world building. I mean, there's streamlining and then there's putting your player on rails. In that regard, I'm on the fence about the interrogation sections. You can't fail them, you see, which should turn it into a pointless try every option in turn puzzle, but it doesn't quite feel that way. Besides, if a wrong response caused a game over, that would only increase the time it took to brute force your way through. Maybe a failure could take you down a different story branch. I can't think of any solution that wouldn't require a lot more work. And for a final awkward segue, the game loves a reference. Whether it's Monkey Island, various movies, itself, or, and I'll admit I did not see this one coming, making you play a simplified version of Punch-Out. More than once, too. Mercifully, they gave us keyboard shortcuts for those. Probably obvious by now, but the fourth wall is only half built here. Neither that nor the references are constant, but certainly enough to say, how do y'all, this game got references and don't respect that fourth wall so much, in case you need an excuse to say that. Whilst this isn't the longest, most narratively fulfilling, well voice acted or polished point and click game I've ever played, I'm not inclined to blast this game to bits. It's okay. Looks great, can't take that away from the game, but nothing else about it reaches that same height. I've definitely seen worse licensed games in the genre, not that you should purely buy it on that basis, although I reckon the price is about right, £11 at time of writing, so if you're looking for something that's a bit of a time waster or or to hold you over to something else, this could do you quite well. Not essential, it's got good bits, this review's already gone on too long, okay bye.